Welcome back everyone. In this video I'm going to be covering one of the last basic functions that are provided by the dplyr package. So for this video we're going to be covering the mutate function. And to start we are going to load up this flights data library that we had before. And we are also going to be loading up obviously dplyr. So we need to add both of these lines to load those libraries. And then to load the data you can name your data anything you want. I'll, I'm going to be assigning it to just an object called data, but you could obviously call this data name or anything. It's just a name. And this is going to be the flights data. So this is provided by this NYC flights library. So that's why I can write it just like this. When I run that, we'll have this data that you're a little bit familiar with from prior videos. Um, and why don't we just check out the column names of our data just to remind ourselves what that looks like. So we have some time periods and some flights and some details on the flight timing. All right. And so now we are exploring this mutate function provided by dplyr. So why don't we just l l take a look at what that looks like. So we come down here to console question mark mutate and then we can load up the documentation for the for the mutate function within dplyr. Okay? So this will give you some usage. It'll also tell you, give you some examples here. Let's see if any of these are helpful here. Uh, but the thing that mutate does is it allows you to add new columns to your data table very easily. And you can even do some calculations for the new columns. So that's what we're going to be exploring. Let's take a look at our data here and see if we can come up with something interesting. Okay? Uh, let's see what we have here. We got some timings. We have departure times, scheduled departure times, the actual delay. So that's interesting, right? Because this flight took off two minutes later than expected. And the same thing for arrival times. Okay. And then we also have flight numbers, destinations, air time, distance, and hours. Okay. So why don't we do something real simple here, okay? We're going to be adding a new column to this data table where we look at basically how much slower this flight was relative to expectations. And the way that I'm going to calculate that is I'm going to say, what's the difference between this delay from departure and the delay on arrival? So for example, in this first row, we took off two minutes later than expected. So if the actual flight itself is exactly as we'd expect, we should be arriving two minutes late as well. But in this case, we arrived 11 minutes late. So I'd like to have a column here that just has a minus nine. It says the flight itself was nine minutes slower than expected. And we can use the mutate function within dplyr to do that. Okay, so how's that's gonna look? We're gonna be using the mutate function and within this function, we're going to be applying the mutation to our data. And what do we want here? So we're creating a new column. Let's come back here and just take a look. Uh, I suppose we could call this flight gain. So the idea here is if it's faster than expected, then we'll get a positive value. If we have a, a loss, it'll be a negative value. And what does this equal? This is going to be equal to, let's see our column names here. Let's go back to our data and actually see it. Uh, this is just simply going to be departure delay minus this arrival delay. So we can type that in. Dep delay minus R delay, okay? And this is finished. So let's run this and see how it affects our data. We could change this if we didn't want to override our original data table for some reason, but this is this is fine as well. So we we'll run that, and then let's just jump in here and see how it updated. So we should have a column here at the very end with our new calculation. So flight gain minus nine, exactly as we expected. Another useful thing about the mutate function is that we can do other calculations in this as well. So we can, at the end of this column, if we add a comma, we can add a, even another column here. So let's call this one 
gain per hour. And this is going to be equal to how much of a flight gain we receive per hour. So how are we able to calculate this? Well, we can take this value, which we just calculated, and we can divide it by the total air time. But this is in minutes, okay? So if we wanted it in hours, we, we'd do another adjustment as well. So let's say this is equal to our flight gain divided by our air time divided by 60. So this is now in hours. And make sure all our parentheses are correct. So now that now when I run this, we're still going to be mutating data. And it actually already has this column here, flight gain. So we're going to be overriding this as well. We're not going to get a second column of flight gain here. Okay, We're replacing our entire data set. And then when I run that, let's take a look and see how that looks. All right, so now we have this flight gain of minus 9 divided by this total air time divided by 60. Okay, so we were a little bit slower than expected on this flight. All right, so now these are all normalized by how long the flight is, so that's pretty interesting too. Perhaps we can do some plots of that later. And that wraps up the mutate function. We're going to be using this all the time, so keep this in mind, and we'll, you'll see it again if, if you don't have everything solidified yet. It'll become solidified over time. All right, see you in the next video.